Finally, May 29th is here and the Kruby Inside event has come and gone. And what can I say, I'm absolutely left speechless. Now I'm going to be covering every announcement at the event, from any new Bleach news that we've had regarding the anime, as well as if there was any Burn the Witch manga content, or if there was possibly information revealed about the manga hell arc for Bleach. Now before Kruby Inside Episode 1, we had Kubo reveal some information on Club Outside about Core 3 of the anime. He speaks about coming up with ideas for new battles for that part of the anime. Now this is great news and we will better understand just what he is adding to Core 3 when the second part of the Thousand Year Blood War arc drops since we have been promised at least one anime exclusive fight scene for Core 2. Before the Kruby Inside event there were a lot of expectations as to what news we would be getting. Realistically we were at least expecting a new Bleach preview trailer for Core 2 as well as Kubo sharing his thoughts with us on the second core of the anime, including any exclusive content that he has worked on. Additionally we were also expecting an announcement for Season 2 of Burn the Witch, and if we were really going to be getting our hopes up high, then we were expecting a teaser for the hell arc of the manga. So with the stage set, this is everything that was revealed during the first episode of the Kruby Inside event. The event was a 37 minute pre-recording that was live streamed on the official Junk channel. Now unfortunately it wasn't translated, so I'm going to try my best to relay to you everything that was revealed. Kubo did in fact turn up to the event in some super stylish green drip, and around him and the presenters there were several pieces of Bleach and Burn the Witch merchandise like figures as well as the Call One Blu-ray and even skateboard panels. And if you note, right behind Kubo there's some swimsuit figures of Nini and Noel from Burn the Witch, which is pretty insane to see on screen. So the event begins as they speak about details regarding the 20th anniversary of Bleach and all of the things that are being done to celebrate. Along with updates on the Bleach art exhibition that's being held in Japan, there is also talk about the all new Bleach merchandise including figures, as well as stuff like t-shirts that are currently being sold on Kubo's official fan club, Club Outside Shop. There's things like art collections, posters, etc. Now this initial part of the event had a lot of waffling at the start about merchandise and just general news regarding Bleach and Burn the Witch. And honestly, my favourite part of this initial segment, and honestly my favourite part of this initial segment was just seeing Kubo react to some of the figures that were being showcased. It must have been surreal for a mangaka to see their own work brought to life like this. Now there was one shot in particular that I want to pay a bit of attention to, as he was holding the new Bambietta figure. I cannot believe that he's holding that really lewd figure of Bambietta, and this whole part of the event just had me dying. It's funny how we went nowhere near the Giselle figure and just let this other side presenter hold on to it, while he was showcasing the Bambietta one. So yeah, the event spent some time talking about some of the merchandise, like t-shirts and figures, but then we get to the real meat and potatoes as we turn over to Core 2 of the anime, as we are now introduced to the voice actors of Ichigo and Uryu, along with the director of the all new Bleach anime, Tomohisa Toguchi. The event seems to be very organised as each of them have a clipboard with several pieces of information that they are running through, like some sort of checklist. So the new trailer for Core 2 of the anime drops and we see the blue text which of course represents the Quincy as we've seen from earlier trailers and from Core 1 of the anime. There you have it, Bleach the Thousand Year Blood War arc and in the background we can hear Yuhabak calling out to Uryu Ishida as he declares him to be his successor. Then this blue text appears on screen which translates to separation, which seems to be the subheading for Core 2 of the anime. We then cut to some shots that are focusing on the Sternritter, as we see Basby complaining about Uryu being appointed as the successor, as he questions just who on earth is this guy. We see shots of Bambietta who seems quite indifferent about the news, and we even cut to the Bambi's mask BG9, and then a conversation between Basby and Hashward. Following this we see a shot of Uryu kneeling before Yuhobak as he states that he has severed his ties with everything, as he pledges his allegiance to Yuhobak and his army. We know that here he is drinking Yuhobak's blood in order to acquire his own shrift. Then we cut to one of my most favourite shots from this trailer, and it's Hashrod who is sitting at the head of the table with both of his hands placed upon his sword, as he reaches out to the screen. He orders the Sternritter to break the Shinigami's hopes along with their Zanbakdo and to engrave true defeat into their minds and their bodies. This is some really ruthless stuff. We then pan out across a long table and this shot is so reminiscent of the Espada and how they were iconically sat around their table. You can really tell that Taguchi and the staff knew exactly what they were doing with this scene in particular. This really is one of my favourite shots from this new trailer and it was very fitting to see Hashwald sitting at the head of the table, rightfully so, as the Grand Master of the Sternritter. We then see the brightly lit Soul Society fall to darkness as the Quincy begin their second invasion. We get a shot of Ichibe mysteriously smiling with 
him saying that a thousand years of peace have made the Shinigami weak, as he warns that the Quincy will definitely return in the near future. During this talk, we see a really cool shot of Ichigo removing his white robe, which presumably is following his training with Ichibei, as he wields his dual-bladed, all-new true Shikai. Yuobak is then heard to be saying that the battle against the Shinigami will now end as they launch their second attack. Visually, you can see the skies have turned red as the Quincy begin their attack, with the Soul Society being replaced by the Quincy City. Now there's some really nice close-up shots of Hashward, Uryu and Yuobak here, as we then see them standing on top of the battleground overseeing the attack as they patiently await for their opportunity to ascend to the Soul King's palace. Now the music really kicks in here as we get a preview of the all new opening song which is titled Stars and it's sung by the band WOD. It's a really heavy rock song which is very different to the opening for Call 1. Now we finally get to see round 2 of the Shinigami versus the Quincy. The action kicks off by seeing Ichigo sweating during his training along with a shot of Rukia and Renji also during their training. We then cut to Hueco Mundo and we are shown Orihime, Chad and then this really mysterious figure who we can only assume is Grimjow. Now following a mysterious close-up shot of Yuhobak's moustache which appears to be present in almost every trailer of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, we cut to the Soul Society's Research and Development Institute in an uproar as several red alerts begin appearing on screen following the Quincy's second attack. Several rows of Quincy are revealed as they charge towards the Shinigami and we even get a very brief glimpse of Urahara, which unfortunately is all that we see of Urahara in this trailer. And then of course the iconic blue lighting and the imagery of the Quincy with the red blood pouring down the Quincy cross. And then Basby is shown activating his abilities as he says that his opponent is a good match for him. This is supposedly during his battle against Hitsugaya, as the young captain retaliates by asking why would the winning side beg for their lives. Additionally, there is some brief banter between Rangiku and Hitsugaya here, with her saying that it's cute that her captain is relying on her. Now, notably, you can see that the red sky is in the background, and it looks amazing in my opinion. It does a fantastic job of setting up the mood and the atmosphere of the second core. Following this, we get some glimpses of Hitsugaya's battle against Kangdu, before we cut to BG9 taking out Omaida. A Siphon then appears onto the battlefield and teases her perfected Shunko. She, she states that her opponent is more advanced in comparison to what she was told about him. Now there are some amazing shots of her battling BG9 here with some truly flawless art and animation and I really love this close-up shot in particular of her face. Then we get to see Mask make his appearance within the trailer as he exclaims that he is always serious. This of course is before he charges towards his opponent. Then the majestic glowing Myri is revealed in his new outfit along with Nemu in the back who also looks really cute with the top hat that she is wearing. Now this shot of Myri is of course during his confrontation with Asken who ends up telling Myri that the situation is still very dire for the Shinigami, in response to Myri probably taunting him. Now we have a very important shot that's probably one of the most notable ones in this trailer, which showcases Shinji standing before a pile of corpses. Now presumably these are Shinigami from his own division, as a row of Quincy aim their bows towards Shinji ready to fire. Now I'm presuming that the anime exclusive fight scene in the second core will be Shinji battling against these various Shinigami. We know that in the manga he was taken out by Bambi and we saw very little of Shinji during the Thousand Year Blood War arc after this. We hear Shinji's voice actor say that he will take everything and flip it on his head. This of course is in reference to his Zanpakuto's ability. Shockingly, the trailer actually teases Shinji saying Bankai. Now this is a transformation that we have only been shown during the Can't Feel Your Own World light novels. So it's almost certain that Shinji is going to be given way more love within the anime in comparison to the manga. I really cannot wait to see what Kubo has cooked for us here because it doesn't just stop here with some of the Can't Feel Your Own World content that is being teased for Car 2. But I'll talk more about this just in a second, because before that, we see Komomura rip out his heart for the Grand Elder of his clan. Following this, we get a CG shot of him activating his Bankai, as well as a teaser for his human form as he battles against Bambiata in a holy form. He of course says that he has left behind his life long before he had stepped foot into battle against Bambiata. This of course highlights how Komomura has totally succumbed to revenge. Following this, both Kensei and Rose get some love in this trailer as we get some shots of them on the battlefield, as well as close-up shots of Bambiata in a holy form which is animated absolutely incredibly with all of the sparkling visual 
effects. The Bambis are then revealed as they say that they would be so lonely without Bambietta as they tower over her defeated body. We then cut to my boy Shunsui during his confrontation with Hashward as he tells him that next time he will be waiting for him with some tea made in advance. We then get this very cool shot of a glowing Ichigo with this multicolor effect surrounding him which must represent his new aura as Ichibe can be heard in the background saying that Ichigo has now become a new Shinigami. We then get some very brief shots that seem like memories from within Ichigo's Ryatsu. This is in fact memories that are related to the Soul King's mutilated corpse. I need to emphasize that these images are really blurred and distorted and this all could hint at us getting a Soul King flashback. With this image here being one of the most biggest hints as we see the Soul King encased within that crystallized prison. It's really hard to make out what's going on but here you can definitely see the torso of the Soul King with all of his limbs actually severed. This particular scene ends with Ichibei exclaiming that Ichigo has surpassed the ordinary Shinigami. Now could this be hinting towards Ichibei now saying that Ichigo will be the new Soul King? We then get this really nice shot panning upwards revealing Ichigo in his new outfit that he wears for the remainder of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. We then cut to Kangdu charging forwards and then a bloody Hitsugaya is seen on screen for a brief moment and then we get this really quick glimpse of Komamura's heart after he rips it out and offers it to the Grand Elder. Then some of the lieutenants get some love as Iba is shown to be clashing, followed by Momo, then even Hisagi gets some on-screen love. We see Ukitake sat at the shrine hinting his reveal of Mimihagi. Following this, we see a brief shot of Ikaku and Yumichika, and then a close-up shot of Komamura's human transformation. Now we get another fascinating aspect of this trailer revealed to us via brief glimpses of scenes from Can't Fear Your Own World. Again, it's similar to the Soul King scenes as we get a really distorted look of Tokinada from behind. Now just what does all of this mean? Will we actually see Can't Fear Your Own World material being explored in depth within Core 2? Or are they just teasing us for an anime adaptation of Can't Fear Your Own World following the Thousand Year Blood War arc is definitely something that I absolutely wasn't expecting. If you were to ask me months ago, we're going to see Tokinada in Core 2, I probably wouldn't have believed you. Now the trailer does start to wrap up here with Yuhobak watching over the attack on the Soul Society, with the Quincy's Reishi being represented by these different colours. Now this is something that I'd spoken about in my earlier news and update videos regarding Core 2, because each of the Quincy's Reishi will hopefully be distinguished by their own unique colour, like we had seen earlier with the colour red representing Bambietta when she had activated her holy form. We then see a final shot of Ichigo before we cut to the anime title card, with Ichigo saying that he has been thinking about something since the start of this battle. As he questions if this is a battle between Shinigami and Quincy, then that means that Uryu and him will eventually have to fight. This is a final tease that hints at the focus of Core 2 being on the dynamic between these two characters, and hopefully we're going to be getting some added anime only material with hopefully more exchanges between Uryu and Ichigo, as well as an anime exclusive extended fight scene. The trailer does wrap up with a poem spoken by Uryu as he talks about accepting his destiny and his heart and conviction are demonstrated by his bow fully drawn. The most notable things about this trailer are of course the can't feel your own well material that was teased. We saw Shinji's Bankai along with the possibility of a Soul King flashback, scenes of Tokinada, even the chance that we're going to be shown the original founders of the Soul Society, the five great noble families who in fact had mutilated the Soul King. What does all of this mean now that we've been shown can't feel your own world material? I'm so much more excited for Core 2 now. I cannot wait to see what they have in store for us. We also get to learn the release date for Core 2, which is on a different air date and time slot from Core 1. With a new part of the anime releasing every Sunday, starting on the 8th of July 2023, at the new time of 11pm in Japan. And of course, the anime will be simulcast by Disney Plus in select regions following the live airing of the episode. The opening song of Core 2, like I'd said earlier, was revealed to be the song Stars, sang by W.O.D., who also appeared during the Crew Be Inside event as they share a few words about doing the opening for the new Bleach anime. Then the new key visual for Core 2 was also shown, and amazingly, it is focused upon Uryu and Ichigo, with red representing Ichigo and the color blue representing Uryu. I had spoken about this in my earlier videos for Core 2, that Kubo will in fact be expanding upon the interactions between Uryu and Ichigo, as he's going to be emphasizing the betrayal of Uryu
Uryu after he joins the Stenrita. Adding to this, Ichigo and Uryu's voice actors were also present during the event as they'd shared their thoughts about Core 2. Towards the end of the event, we get some details about the reruns of Core 1 as well as some more discussion about merchandise related to the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime like different art prints, shirts and other merchandise. Now on this occasion, there was no news about Burn the Witch or the Hell arc of the Bleach manga, but we do know that there will be future Kruby Inside events. So definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you're the first to know about all of the latest Bleach updates. Hopefully future events will be just as intense as this one. And in general, I'm going to be back tomorrow with a complete trailer breakdown and analysis, so be sure to look out for that. In my follow-up video to this one, I'll be speaking about various aspects of the production side of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, including what anime staff changes have been made since Core 1 and how this will affect Core 2. But in the meantime, what did you think about the first episode of Kruby Inside? What you think about can't feel your own world material being teased within the trailer. I hope that this special event had matched up to your expectations. Were some of you expecting more from the event? I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and what you want from future Kruby Inside episodes, so definitely continue the discussion in the comments. Lastly, thanks for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you tomorrow for my in-depth trailer breakdown and analysis. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.